3D Coat now has instancing, and what that means is better performance, lower RAM consumption, and general overall more detail for your sculptures if you have any kind of repetitive looking stuff. So let's do something with this sphere primitive here. We can create an instance with instancer over here, or we can simply right click on the vox tree object we wish to have an instance of, and then go to clone instance. We'll just be using the instancer tool. Let's turn symmetry on as it's fully supported with instancing. Okay, with the instancer tool, we can do a few unique options here. New instance, new mirrored, new mirror X, Y, or Z, new inversion. We can also put an instance in the subtree that's parented to the currently active object layer in the Vox tree. Okay, we also have all the standardized transform tools as well. Okay, let's hit new instance, and you'll see it's created a new layer in the Vox tree, and it's selected, so let's move it over to the side here. Now let's activate the extrude tool, go to the E panel, turn on orthographic mode, okay, and we can sculpt on either the instance or the original. The changes will be propagated up or down. So notice it's not updating live in the viewport. That's because we have incremental render turned on. You can turn that off by going to voxels and unticking incremental render. And now you'll see it update live in the viewport. As such, we can also use just about any of the tools for voxel sculpting. Uh, let's use the carve tool. We can cut pieces off like that. We can also actually sculpt if we wish. Oops, I'm using that. Okay, there we go. You can see, of course, it's fully supporting symmetry as well, which is quite handy. Let's go ahead and undo that. We can also do this with no symmetry. Let's uh, try something a little different here, like the snake tool. So we can, maybe not something so stupid, but <laughs> we can do something like tubing. We can use a curves tool. We can use spikes if we want. We can also use the merge tool as well. Also very cool. All right, so we've got some models up here. Um, I haven't installed Tinker's Kit, at least on this version. So we'll just use on pen and place a few. Oopsie. Where are you? Well, you can see it updating live in the viewport. Let's see. Let's select a different object here. And um, where are you? Transform. We'll just use a transform tool. Ah, uh, what the heck? We'll go back with that object. Auto scale. Oops. Where are you? There we go. It's way down here. Okay, we'll hit enter to apply. Sure, we'll remember that. Okay, let's get that out of the way. So you can see um, with this maybe not so cool looking demo that uh, you can use a lot of different things. Let's um, do one more thing here. Let's delete that object, clear out that object's volume, activate the primitive tool, and Let's use the sphere again. Let's go back to the carve tool. Activate symmetry again. Turn on drag rectangle. And do a few. Oops. Actually, what I wanted to show <laughs> first is the axial tool. So let's activate that. And we have a bunch of objects here. If we move this out, we can place them. We can, of course, change the number of objects. But what's really important here is the merge axial as instances. 
and that will create each one of these as an instance. So 10 is a good number. Let's select the original and now let's activate the extrude tool, track rectangle again. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry, that was a curve tool. Okay, here we go. So you can see all those changes are being applied to the instances in real time. Okay. All right. So I think you get the idea there. We can, of course, again, use any of these tools, muscles, oops, wrong one. We want a drawing mode. Let's draw off this guy here. Something like that. And uh, <laughs> I know this looks kind of ornamental, but uh, I've been addicted to creating weird looking um, circular patterns like this lately since we've got the instance tool. We can use snakes again. We can use the 2D paint. Uh, we need to increase the radius here. We zoom out. That looks a little funky. There we go. Something like that. I think you get the idea. Uh, really awesome feature to have in a sculpting application. Never thought it would be so useful in, for sculpting, but here we are. So uh, one thing to remember is that these instances are not using up memory or very little memory. So we can, if we need to, have a lot of repeating patterns using instances is probably going to be the way to go. So for example, rivets on um, a seafaring or spaceship, hairs on a character, uh, anything that would really benefit from having a lot of one thing, instances are going to be the way to go. Okay, thanks for watching.